We all know everything comes with both positive and negative consequences. Then how can we assume that drugs are only beneficial for us? Obviously, they can have negative effects too, which we can refer to as adverse drug reactions or ADRs. Meanwhile, a detailed lecture on ADRs is just on its way. Let's talk about the different sorts of ADRs. So, there are two methods to classify adverse drug reactions. Dorse classification and Rollin Thompson's classification. Well, today, let's just discuss the most commonly used system of classification of ADRs, that is, Rollin Thompson classification. Well, this system divides adverse effects into two main groups, type A and type B reactions. However, it has undergone further elaboration over the years to take account of ADRs that do not fit within the existing system of classification. So now they are divided into six types A, B, C, D, E, and F. The first thing we all studied as a kindergarten student can even be used as a mnemonic to memorize the salient features of these types, where A can refer to as augmented. B for bizarre, C for chronic, D for delayed type reactions, E for endofuse, and F for failure of efficacy. So let's get deeper into the details of each type. For type A or augmented type reactions, well as the name suggests, the exaggeration of primary pharmacological effect of the drug when given in the usual therapeutic dose. So they are predictable and are very common. These effects are normally dose-dependent and occur more commonly in the drugs with the low therapeutic index like digoxin or warfarin. Though they are usually mild, but they can prove serious in some cases. As I said, they are mild type reactions, so they are related to a lower morbidity and mortality rate. If I talk about some common examples of type A reactions, they may include bleeding caused by warfarin and other anticoagulants, as normally warfarin is used as an anticoagulant and prevents thrombosis. But you know, excess of everything is bad. So over exaggeration of its response can cause bleeding. Same goes for bradycardia associated with beta blockers and deafness with aminoglycosides. So moving on to type B or bizarre reactions, which are also termed as idiosyncratic reactions. Again, as the name implies, these are the novel responses that are not expected from the known pharmacological actions of drugs. Therefore, you can say they are unpredictable, less common, and so may only be discovered for the very first time after the drug has already been available for the general use. Well, in contrast to type A, they are not dose dependent. Despite being less common than type A, they are often serious and associated with high morbidity and mortality rates. They are often caused by immunological and pharmacogenetic mechanisms. Immunological reactions such as anaphylaxis in response to the penicillins are very common type B reactions. Other examples may include aplastic anemia caused by chloramphenicol or malignant hyperthermia in response to anesthetics. That was all about type B reactions. Now moving forward to type C reactions or chronic type reactions. They may occur due to the chronic use of a drug or due to dose accumulation. They persist for a relatively longer period of time. And this is the actual reason they are often termed to as continuing reactions. Well, they are fairly uncommon and usually dose and time dependent as well. Type C reactions often include osteonecrosis of jaw with the use of bisphosphonate therapy or Cushing syndrome that may be associated with the use of cortisone or hepatotoxicity associated with acetaminophen use or commonly known as peristamol. Now comes type D reactions or delayed reactions that appear sometimes after the use of medicine. This refers to the drug effects that occur due to the prolonged use of a drug which does not tend to accumulate. These reactions are usually uncommon and dose dependent. Well, the timing of type D reactions make them difficult to detect as there is a considerable lag time between the termination of the treatment and the development of the condition associated with the therapy. For example, 
leukopenia, which is uh, basically a reduction in the number of white blood cells, may be caused by the use of flumistine, which is used to treat cancers. So guys, note here that leukopenia may appear up to six weeks after the treatment starts. So that is the actual reason they are categorized into delayed type reactions or type D reactions. Moreover, bladder carcinomas after the treatment with cyclophosphamide is another example of delayed reactions. Action of other carcinogens can also be classified as type D. So that was all about type D reactions. Now you guys must be aware of some reactions that are linked to the withdrawal of medicine. Well, those effects are known as type E or end of use reactions. These are uncommon and occur soon after we withdraw a drug. For example, uh, seizures after stopping the phenytoin therapy that is normally used as anti-epileptic drug or rebound hypertension after stopping clonidine therapy. Well, there is a withdrawal syndrome associated with opiates too. That usually presents with nausea, vomiting, stomach cramps, diarrhea, goosebumps, and depression maybe. There is another syndrome, well, withdrawal syndrome that is associated with the discontinuation of benzodiazepines. It may also be known as benzodiazepine withdrawal syndrome, and it usually presents with insomnia, anxiety, or perceptual disturbances, and many more. So heading towards the last type of reactions, that is type F reactions. They are characterized by the unexpected failure of therapy, where a drug undesirably increases or decreases in efficacy. Well, these reactions are common and dose-related and often caused by drug interactions. Type F reactions may include the decreased clearance of a drug by dialysis, or the decreased effect of antibiotics due to the resistance developed by certain bacteria, or failure of oral contraceptives in the presence of enzyme inducers. So that was all about Troll and Thompson's classification of ADRs. For more such videos stuffed with knowledge, keep watching scadia.com.